What's up, freaks? This is Steve Does, episode number nine. If you have any questions, comments, health, fitness, nutrition, training, you can put them right down there in the comments. I'll respond to your questions live. It could be anything health, fitness, nutrition, exercise related, or whatever else. Really, we're looking to aim it towards that, but it could be whatever. Steve says, episode number nine, live broadcast on health, fitness, training, nutrition, peak freak style. Today, we're going to be talking about questions that you've sent in throughout the week about the keto diet, the best type of workouts for weight loss, how to build muscle while losing weight, and what best foods, what what are the best foods to add after you've already lost some weight and got results that you maybe weren't eating before because they were on your no list in our educational eating program at Peak that you know all about, that you've been following and living by. So again, you have any questions, put them down here in the comments. So basically, these episodes are all about what are you struggling with in your weight loss, fitness, training, nutrition, whatever. Today, what is the keto diet? How to build and maintain your muscle at, you, while you lose weight? And what are the best no-list foods to have after you've lost a little bit of weight? Steve Does is a live weekly episode for anyone struggling with getting results in your exercise program, diet, weight loss journey. As I share with you my personal in the trenches, unique peak freak approach to training systems and educational eating guidelines. So you'll know how to train, how to eat and how to freaking lose weight and really how to get real results in the real world. That's what it's all about. We train different. We eat different. We are fucking different. We are peak freaks. We're preparing for the invasion. You're going to learn about our unique training systems, weight loss strategies, nutritional discipline and educational eating program. Questions, put them down in the comments. What's up, Delandre? Delandre's here with us. What's going on? So first, last week, one of the questions was someone asked what I I thought about the keto diet, and we just went to that briefly. Then someone asked me, isn't the the peak freak way of eating pretty similar to the keto diet? It is, but there's some major differences. Most diets are pretty similar. Oh, we have a visitor. We have a visitor. I'm making a run for it. And someone just told me that the head is cut off. I don't know why. So, someone asked, isn't the peak freak educational eating very similar to the keto diet? And not really. I mean, all diets are the same, right? Almost any diet is has restricted calories. So, you're going to lose weight. Most diets, you're going to get some results. You're going to probably lose weight on most freaking diets because you're, you're, you're restricting your calories. But what, what you need to know about the keto diet, and I'll tell you the differences really between our educational eating. First thing is it's a diet. We do not, we don't diet here at peak. Low carb, low carb diets have been around for a while, for, for decades now. And chances are you probably tried a low carb diet yourself, right? And, and since simple refined sugars are the leading cause of, of weight gain usually, you know, but in addition to fat and, and, and bad choices in, in eating or what leads to your weight gain, it makes sense that cutting out carbs are going to help you lose right weight, right? You know, on the peak free educational eating, we go minimum 50% protein, 25% carbs, 25% fat as a baseline, as a baseline. So the two types of most popular low carb diets out there are the Atkins diet, which has now been literally decades around, and the keto diet, ketogenic diet. They, they both start out similar, but the Atkins diet transitions to, to different diet phases while the ketogenic diet pretty much stays the same. The basis of the keto diet is, it, it gained popularity in the last few years, but it's really been around for a long time. It started in like the 1920s for treating epilepsy and epileptic seizures, but now there's medication and stuff, so they don't need the use for it. So there's obviously something there to it. I think it has something to do with just controlling your carbs, controlling your sugar, so no specific really diet is going to do that. So with today's obesity and, you know, the low-carb craze that's out there, people came up with different ways and different ideas of how to how to, how to lose some weight with some different, different catchy little phrases and terms and, and, and things. So here, here's how it goes. Basically, your body's using carbohydrates for energy, right? So what happens when you don't eat enough carbs? Your, your body 
has to turn to either protein or fat to get its energy. And that process is basically called ketosis. So you have no carbs, so you have to use something else for the energy. And what that's going to lead to is weight loss, obviously. You know, so ketosis is the body's natural way of survival. Someone just told me my head is still cut off. Let's try that. So that's a, the basic body survival is the stored food or fat or, or muscle you have. It's going to use as fuel. We kind of know that. We talked about that before. So when food intake or, or carbs, in this case we're talking about, is reduced, the liver is going to produce ketones for energy. And as it breaks down, it's going to break down the fat that you eat and the fat that's stored, hopefully in those places that you want, but not guaranteed in your, your hips, your thighs, your belly or whatever, right? So the keto diet is is known as a low carb, high fat diet because they go very high fat. They go low carbs, under 50 grams of carbs usually a, a day is the general, the general guidelines. There's different variations of it, but the general guidelines are going much lower, 50 or even a lot lower carbs a day. And basically that's to make their body run out of carbs and sugar and glucose so they can get into ketosis. So it normally takes, it could take anywhere from three, four, five days to get to that, that level of those low carbs. And then they just maintain that and ride the wave of that. And the aim is to use the ketosis and, and burn fat since you don't have the carbs. So instead of eating carbs, you eat a, they eat a variety of healthy fats and protein. Healthy is the key word. It should be healthy, but is it? Are, are you really sticking to that? So there's, there's several different types of the keto diet, but the, the general ratio on the, on the keto diet is 20% protein, 75% fat, and like 5% carbs. That's extremely low fucking carbs. Does it work for some people? I'm sure it does. It goes kind of against the way we do what we do over here, and we have the greatest results anywhere in the area for weight loss, and I even have to say probably in the country and close to the world, for the weight loss results that we get and pump out on a regular, consistent basis that that keep the weight off is unmatched, really unmatched the way that we do it, and it's our own educational eating program. But anyway, a keto diet is used for people are looking to lose weight, right? And the diet is also known. There's There could be some health benefits. There could be some health benefits besides weight loss. It could help control blood sugar, obviously, because you're not having any freaking carbs. They say some of the benefits are improved mental focus, lowering blood sugar, and there's been evidence of treating Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and sleep problems. But I think that all that has to do with just lowering the, lowering the carbs. So anyone that is going to lower their carbs a little bit, I think is going to have that, not some speci- specific fad little diet kind of thing, right? So the fewer carbs that you consume, the sooner you'll enter ketosis. And a low-carb diet means no grains, no pastas, no breads, sugars, starches, potatoes, rice, sweet potatoes, and all that stuff, and pretty much no fruit. That sound familiar? That's the way we've always been doing it on the educational eating program. But the keto diet, if you heard the numbers before, they go 75% fat, 75% fat, and they go healthy fat. All right, I know there's people out there that are freaks about this keto stuff, just like there's people that are freaks about vegan and freaks about all this other stuff, right? But I think it's an excuse to eat a whole bunch of fat, but it does take some discipline to go such low carbs, but you, it's, it's a very high fat, and it's going to be hard to maintain that for long term, and there's also a kicker why we eat the way we eat on our educational program, and we're going to get to that. A huge difference and there's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but I'm going to tell you the main reason why we, that, that, that's first there is the reason why we're different. We don't go 75% freaking fat. We're at 25% fat and we do have some more than 5% carbs. We're up to as high as 25% carbs and still getting ridiculous record type weight loss. Again, questions, comments, put them down there. Let's talk about it. What's on your mind? What questions you have? So you need also dehydration could be a problem on a, on a keto diet. And they snacking because they get that hunger, could, make, could get that hunger in between. Also, regular exercise with any nutrition program is encouraged. But I'm going to get to that in a second about what kind of exercise you need to be doing in general. 95% of the people on a keto diet, that, that, the type of exercise they need to do. So how do, you, how, do you know when they, how do they know when they reach ketosis? Really, a blood or urine sample is going to tell you, but also your body is going to tell you. When you're going to the bathroom all the time, you have that dry mouth, cotton mouth pretty much, and then eventually increase energy and hopefully your hunger goes down. You know why your hunger goes down? Because it's eating 
a way it's itself. Hopefully, it's eating away at the fat and not the protein. But is it? Are you really that dialed in with what you're doing and your intensity levels are right for your workout to make sure you're going with fat? But there's also downsides to it, like anything with low carb. And you're talking about extreme low carb and, and across the board, it doesn't change. You stay low carb. People could experience the negative side effects also, like anything else, which could be dizziness, headaches, irritability, grogginess, muscle cramps, legs cramps, freaking indigestion, constipation, hair loss, heart palpitations, and an itchy rash. And also they're going with no fruit, just like the, the Peak Freak Educational Eating Program goes no fruit. So you could have nutritional deficiencies in there, but we make up for them in our program. Dehydration is also a risk because the carbs hold a, a lot of water, retain a lot of water. So they're going no carbs. There's also a huge chance of dehydration and going to the bathroom all the time. So it could get a bad rap in terms of exercise because you need carbs, right? I asked uh, uh, recently in California, a uh, friend or I don't know I don't really have any freaking friends but someone I know that really is big into the keto world so I said I asked about the training and how could you possibly train when you're that low carb because that you need freaking carbs and what I was told was the truth is that this is word for word the truth is that the keto diet has a regular place within a regular low or moderate exercise routine and can, but can be easily adopted to fit the lifestyles of those who are more active. Now, if you're watching this, if you're watching Steve says and Steve does, and you're a motherfucking peak freak, you're not looking for some, some low or moderate exercise or looking to be just a little more active. You're a motherfucking freak. You're doing some high intensity training. You're doing some boxing. There's no lot low and moderate boxing. I hate to tell you that shit. There's no low and moderate boot camp training sessions. There's really not even low, there's no low and moderate weightlifting. Even if you're doing lightweight, it's not low and moderate because you're going to be doing high reps. You're going to be breaking a sweat. Your heart's going to be pumping. You're going to go to something else. You're going to do some circuit training and you're going to keep it moving. So to be such low carb, you're going to have, have, have problems with that. Because when it comes to carbs, right? During low intensity aerobic exercise, the body uses fat as its primary energy source. And we're talking about just slow, steady jogging, or you see those hamsters on the wheel in those commercial gyms and those fucking uh, elliptical machines or whatever, or an exercise bike. That's low intensity aerobic exercise. The primary source is fat, but if you're only burning whatever, 100 calories of fat in that time, when you could do 20 minutes or 30 minutes of high intensity cardio and burn a ton more calories, and even burn more fat throughout the day. So during high-intensity aerobic exercise, carbs are normally the main energy source. And after carbs, your body doesn't choose to use fat for high-intensity training. It's going to use protein. So if you're not dialed in on these certain types of diets that go so extreme low-carb and high-fat, because they say, oh, we're going to go right into fat burning, but then you're doing high-intensity training... And I already said there's exceptions to the rules because I'll have people that are going to email and be like, oh, you know what the fuck you're talking about because I'm keto and look at me, whatever. And you probably also stick a needle in their ass. But that's besides the point. That's a whole nother episode. But carbs, you need carbs, some carbs. That's why we go lower carbs in our program, but we still want you to have a, a decent amount there because we're training fucking hard. We're freaks. We don't want moderate. If we want to moderate, we'll, we'll go for a walk around the neighborhood. We want some intensity. We want some action, some energy. We're different. We eat different. We fucking train different. And we are different. And we don't want moderate and low intensity. It just doesn't work for us. We'll be fucking bored. And then we'll start cutting that all together. Or it's just so low and moderate. We're not getting any effect out of it. Not increasing our mood and getting a muscle tone. And then we're still eating. If you're eating a shitload of fat and no carbs, you're going to just destroy your muscle and get fatter. So... That's, that's the quick breakdown on it. Any questions in there, put them in the comments. And so a next question was, so that's the basic breakdown and what's different between, because really the peak diet is, is, the big difference is the fat. They go fat, high fat on the keto diet. And that flows into one of our questions we're going to come up in a little bit about someone to ask, what are some foods that I could eat on the no list if I've gotten some results? And we're going to get into that. Or basically the healthiest no list foods and options. So, but before that, what are the best, someone asked, what are the best veggies to eat for weight loss? That's a simple question. We talk about it all the time. As you already know, probably it's more of the green stuff, right? The best low carb vegetables to have in the Peak Freak educational eating system are going to be spinach, raw spinach, Romaine lettuce, steamed or raw cauliflower, 
green cabbage, collard greens, broccoli, kale, steamed kale are going to, so the greener, the better, right? Corn is the one stay away from at all costs. There's no nutritional value to it. So those greens go overboard them. Go fucking overboard them because you know we cut our fruits also in the Peak Freak Educational Eating. We cut our fruits. So go all in on those greens as much as you want. I say it all the time. You probably heard it before. Have you, I ask you, have you ever heard of someone getting fat off of eating too much broccoli? You haven't. That hasn't happened. You're not going to get fat off of eating too much broccoli. So that led right into the next question. How do I build and maintain my muscle while I lose weight? So making muscle gains. You can lose weight and still build lean muscle. Maybe you're not going to get big and massive and bulky and be lifting record amounts of weight because that's when you're going to, you need to be big and heavy and have a little extra weight if you want to be lifting record weights. But as you probably see yourself, you're losing weight. You lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. But at the same time, the weight you're doing on the dumbbells goes from 10 to 15 to 20 up to 30 and 30 fucking five, right? So you could get stronger while you're losing weight. You could build lean muscle while you're losing weight if you're doing it the right way. That's why we go high protein, but we still add some carbs because we need that fuel to train like a fucking beast and train like a fucking freak is the way we do it. So you need to build and strengthen your muscle while you're losing weight. You're not going to get big and massive, but you need to do it. So you know your body has like they, they change the number all the time. I don't know if we just grow and we're evolving. It used to be like 626 muscles, right? Now they say there's over 700 muscles in the body. You hear a different fucking thing every time. Whatever. There's a shitload of muscles in your body. And make up, that, make up about half of your body weight are just the muscles in your body. Somewhere around there, obviously, everyone's a little freaking different. And you probably know a few of them because you don't need to know the names of all that shit. You know your biceps, your triceps, your quads, all that other bullshit, right? But you, you, all these muscles in your body... Have a role, have a freaking purpose, maintain your posture, digest food, freaking breathe, keep you warm, and circulate your blood. So when you have more muscle, every day tasks are made easier because you're less likely to to, to suffer an injury and you're you're going to be better able to lose weight. You're going to have a boost in metabolism. You're going to be better able to lose weight because you're going to move better. You're going to move faster and stronger. And there's, there's one reason why weight training is the key to a balanced workout routine and it's gain more muscle and you'll end up losing more weight. It's crazy how it sounds, but how do you do it? You got to feed the freaking beast. Feed the freak. Feed the freaking muscle. You got to feed your muscle. If you think you're about to, you know, we're not going to talk about all the reps and the sets, that part of the, the, the building muscle part, but since we're on the nutrition kick, talking about these different diets and the different vegetables, we're going to go into the foods on the no list and all this other stuff. We're going to keep it on the nutrition side for today. So your diet, your nutrition and your nutritional fucking discipline pays a, a huge part in building muscle. Every bite you take, everything you shovel into your freaking pie hole, whatever foods you eat are either going to help or going to harm your muscle gain. So when you're starting to plan out your muscle building freaking diet, you need to crank up the protein. That's why we go minimum baseline of 50% protein. On some other diets out there, you see 20% protein. That shit ain't going to cut it for us because we don't just want to train hard. We can't sit still. We're freaks. We need to train hard, so we need some carbs for that. We want to burn fat, but we also want to be lean and ripped and build some freaking muscle so we can show that shit off on the beach with your little thong fucking bikini, right, this summer. So you need to crank that shit up in the protein and make sure you replenish your muscles and refeed them after each workout. And that's the time you can handle a little bit of carbs. You can mix your carbs with your protein. It's the best time for your carbs of the day. It's going to be right after your workout. Your muscles are empty. Your body's empty. Your blood sugar is low. So you can put some carbs in there to replenish those muscles. Fill them back up with that glycogen to fill up for the next time you're ready to attack that shit. It's also going to be an insulin rush with all that, with the extra carbs and sugar. Not a ton, but I'm just saying that's the time you're going to have probably the most, the best time. And it's going to rush that protein and and nutrients back into your muscle, help you recover faster. So you need some carbs in there in our type of training because we train like fucking animals. Some of you freaks, we do 60-minute training sessions. You can get, technically, if you went all out, I've tested it on myself and it's worked. You could do a one, you could do a 30-minute training session four to five times a week and get great freaking results. But that's just not enough for us. Mentally, that's not enough for us because we're fucking freaks. So we do 60-minute sessions and some of you freaks would go back to back a boot camp and a boxing session. You need to be fueled for that shit. You need to be fueled up or you're going to end up eating muscle. Proteins, you know what they are already. It's the egg whites, the fishes, the, the, the chicken, turkey, lean turkey, no skin. We go no, no, no cow, no beef. We don't go with that shit. 
We, we don't even, we don't, unless you have specific preferences or are allergic or whatever, or your doctor tells you, we go all kinds of protein. We go whey, we go soy, we go casein, doesn't matter. We use them all and, and we get results of it and long lasting results. We're talking decades, decades worth of, you know, the, you, the data doesn't lie. The data doesn't lie. The results don't freaking lie. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of tens of thousands of pounds lost with this process at, with our peak freaks. So, you might be cutting, trying to cut your calories in, in an effort to lose weight, but in order to build muscle, you need to fuel, you need to feed the freaking muscles to recover and to have the energy for the output if you're training hard like we do. So the key is to eating healthy calories and not a bunch of shit and center your diet as much as you can. You're going to have to supplement probably because we're eating all the time, but you want to have some also have some whole foods in there. Don't just go only supplements all day. That shit ain't going to work for you to gain the muscle and lose the freaking fat. So then training to build a muscle, you need to focus on the right type of training because if you're doing just high intensity, only cardio all the time, the wrong ways also and the wrong techniques, you're going to be fucking screwed. You can spend a lot of time at the gym and never see much of a change if, if, especially in your muscle mass and the way you look and the way you feel and toned and feel and strength and the way your body actually is looking, the way you, the way you want it to look, you can see no results if you're doing things the wrong way. Or you're doing the wrong kinds of exercises or the wrong te- techniques of exercise. That's why you need to have coaches that are on your ass and making sure you're doing things the right way. Unless you want to just build up one area of your body, you need to be spending your time, for the most part, doing compound movements, circuit training. Compound movements is like a bicep curl is not a compound movement. You're moving just one joint. A push-up, a chest press. You're using more than two, more than one joint. It's a compound movement. Squats, deadlifts. Then also you're going to talk about your plyos. Those are all going to technically be compound movements. Your, your multi, multi-movements like the combined movements, a squat thrust, when you're adding circuits or chaining exercise together, a long complex, putting a bunch of stuff together. That's how you build lean muscle and lose fat at the same time and also get stronger. Now we're not talking about these power lifters strong because none of I don't think if you're one of us, you're probably not looking for that. Maybe you are, but in general, you're probably not looking to get all big and beefy and bulky and, and, and fucking bench press 800 pounds. So these multi-joint movements work more than one joint at a time, multi-joint, duh. So that's meaning they work more than one muscle group at a time also. So it's not just working one little muscle like a bicep curl. Sure, we do the curls for the girls because we want to get that shit fucking pumped up. We work those in. But you're going to work your bicep, believe it or not, much better when you're doing a a, a pull-up or a lat pull-down. TRX rows because you're going to be working your back, your lats, your rhomboids, your freaking rear deltoids and biceps, forearms, your grip. So Compound movements are the way to go. Bigger movements. The bigger, the better. The end result is going to be you're going to lift more weight. You're going to get stronger. You're going to build more muscle. You're going to burn more freaking calories in less amount of time. Think about the amount of calories and muscle you're building and doing a bicep curl compared to doing a pull-up. You're working so much more muscle, which is going to get you stronger, make you lift more weight, make you build more muscle, and also you're moving, using more muscle so you're going to burn more freaking calories. So your weight training routine should be built around and your and your cardio your cardio like our cardio is different our high intensity cardio is different we do heavy, we do some strong cardio shit not just some regular you know we'll do body weight only but even the body weight movements should be compound movements based around all the major movements of squats deadlifts bench presses you know chest press shoulder presses overhead press and rows it's all based around that and just different millions of variations of that you know then you can go into step ups and lunges and all these other movements but that's the basics the next part of how to build lean muscle is like everything else don't be a little bitch. It might be common sense, but you need to challenge yourself in, in, you know, in your mind and in your freaking body that, you know, you aren't going to get just big muscles just because you want them and because you're going to the gym once in a while and doing some bullshit little Nautilus freaking machine. The hell? Tyson's at it putting notes over here. You have to work on your muscles and attack those motherfuckers to make them to grow. So the best, I love the best, the best shit that people do is it'll be after like a long weekend. Like these, we just had a, we just had a weekend, Memorial Day, that just happened, right? So Memorial Day weekend, we just fit, we just passed it. And after a long weekend, you'll see someone get, that didn't lose any weight or gained like two pounds. They're like, oh yeah, but it must be muscle or people even say, oh yeah, my trainer told me it's muscle. Motherfucker, if you had the, 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 science or you had the technique you had the steps to gain two pounds or in a month like five six seven pounds of muscle in a month 
You would be the freaking god of the exercise world because it takes fucking months and months and years to build that kind of muscle, to quality muscle. So you're not building that shit overnight. You're not building it in a weekend. You're not building it in a week or a month, pounds and pounds of muscle. Of course, eventually there's some shift where you're going to start building muscle and and your, the weight is going to look different. You know you can look like this and weigh 140 and look like this and weigh 150 if it's muscle. But that shit, we're talking time, months, months, time under tension in those freaking muscles to make that shit happen. So... And if you, you, you need to lift a, a heavy amount of weight. You need to push yourself. You need to challenge yourself. Don't be a little bitch when it comes to grabbing those weights, working those little purple little dumbbells and all this other bullshit. Real strength. If you're looking for strength, you're talking like six, you know, six reps, eight reps. Then you get to start getting to 10 and 12 reps to, to get that build the muscle, not just strength. So usually our, our protocols will be anywhere from 10 to 12, 15 when we're looking for that extra little longer circuit. A little more toning, a little more leaning out will go 15 and even up to 20 sometimes, or if it's for time, depending on, you know, and we'll mix it up all the time, the time and the reps, because you need to make the muscles freaking fail. If you're using a weight and you get to 15 reps and it's too light, motherfucker, you better keep going till that shit is heavy. And if you pick too light of a weight, you better keep going. You do 50, 60 them. I don't give a shit. You need to work the fucking muscle and freaking put in some hard work, some intensity. And then... When you're, if you're doing, talking about just strength training, not circuit training, whatever, then you need to rest, let the muscle recover if you're working the same muscle. We know usually we're doing kind of circuit training. So your rest of one muscle is doing another muscle. The rest of that muscle is doing another muscle and you're going to loop it back around and you can just go. And then we're, then we're talking about burning some fucking serious fat right there and building muscle and looking better and having fucking energy and not eating away at your muscle and not having an excuse to have 75% of your fucking calories coming from fat. So, also, you need variety. You need to have a good workout variety. You need to have a good coach making sure you're doing things the right way because doing the same shit every fucking day is going to get you the same results every day if you're just always doing the same thing and it's not going to build that muscle and that lean tone look if you're just doing the same shit. Your body will get used to it. Let's just take an example of running on a treadmill. Say you run a treadmill three miles every day. You haven't run it all in your life. You start running today, three miles a day. In the beginning, you're going to burn like a shitload of calories. I don't know, whatever. Let's say 700 calories in three. It's not that much, but just say whatever. 500 calories and you ran three miles, right? Every day you run three miles. Guess what? A year from now, you run three miles. You're going to burn like 300 calories, 250 calories. Your body's used to it. It's going to get more efficient. It's going to know how to do it. It could do that shit in its sleep. So you need to change your shit up, which is why we're constantly changing up the routines in our Peak Freak program, the boot camp and the boxing sessions. You'll never do the same workout twice, ever, ever, ever. Always different. Always different changing up the parameters, changing things up. So you need to gradually increase your workload, either increase your reps, increase, change the exercise. You need to change one of the parameters or increase your weight or put different exercises in different order. So many different ways we do it. You see these workouts that we do in our Peak Freak workouts. A lot of shit goes into design, designing those. It's not just throwing a bunch of exercise together. We didn't inv- invent the push-up, but we're going to make that shit the best fucking push-up ever. And we're going to design that shit so you never get bored of it either. So... Keep track of your shit. And then next, just as important as anything else, you need to rest. You need to rest your muscles to let them freaking grow. During strength training or high-intensity training, you're going to get into tiny tears in your freaking muscles. And in order for your muscles to freaking heal, they require rest in between so they can heal and grow and recover. And you can come back stronger and harder and faster the next time out. You can't overtrain. So it's during this rest that nutrients are going to be delivered back into your muscles. The, the protein is going to be, be get re- repair and you're going to repair the damage you did during the freaking high intensity training or the strength training. So on your rest days, stay active, keep, keep an active lifestyle with, then you could do your lower intensity shit and then maybe go even a little lower carbs in those days. But you still need some, you need that to help recover, to help push that fucking protein in. And then last but not least, you need to stay freaking hydrated. You need water with any exercise. It's important to stay hydrated. You already know that shit. Even a slight dehydration can lead to huge, huge drops in performance Drops in performance are going to lead to drops mentally because you're going to feel like shit. And then those mental drops mean, bam, your results go to shit. Stay hydrated. So where that's that's going to be, I'll give you a quick recap. You know, you pretty much know all this stuff. You need to, we do 50% of our protein, right? And 25 carbs, 25 fat. But we're talking about, we talked about building strength and Gradually increase, you need to increase your workload, change your intensities, change your reps, you need a variety of training, right? You need to work freaking hard. 
You need to fuel your muscles. They need to have energy with the carbs, the little bit of carbs you're using. You need to have a lot of protein to repair and to build. Muscle is freaking protein. You need to rest and you need to freaking hydrate. It's like anything else. That's simple stuff. Stuff you already know. Let's see if we have any questions in here. Water. There are no water breaks. You're an adult. If you need, Rachel Miller said, can you tell about the water? There's no, there's no time for that shit. Because listen, you already get a rest recovery in between sets or to change stations or this and that. People are take so fucking long to do that already. Guess what? You need to stay hydrated. If you need a sip of water, you know what you fucking do? You fly, you go take a sip, and you jump right back into what you were doing. Fucking simple as that. That's all it takes. That's why you don't need 80 water bottles laying around the floor because someone's just going to slip and bust their ass and then say, oh, why were the water bottles around the floor? You run over, you go get your water. You don't need to all go at the same time. You need a sip, you go get a sip, and you hop right back in. No big deal. Bam, just like that. You didn't miss a fucking second. Make it quick. How many times a week should we do strength training to build muscle effectively? If you're talking about just strength training, depends on if you're doing how you're breaking down the muscles. But if you're get if you're doing if you're also looking to still stay lean and fit, you want to you you probably just need to do total body. You could get away with it a minimum two times, but probably two to four times really. But in those other times, if you're doing like a hard cardio workout where there's say a squat thrust with a dumbbell or you know plyos and all this other stuff that stuff is building lean muscle you don't realize you take pick take a pair of dumbbells and do a crawl out to a push-up with dumbbells crawl back in and stand up that's some that's some serious fucking muscle building i'm just showing it to you and i can feel my triceps and my chest working so how many times a week if you were doing just strength training and and not really you know you would need to do a little more you need to be on a, a weight lifting routine but boot camp style you could get away with two strength days Two cardio days, mix in a boxing day or two, two, one or two boxing days, and boom, you're done. You're feeling crazy. You do add a boxing day to a strength day, some shit like that. But boom, that's what it takes right there. Four to five days a week. The program, our Peak Freak program is designed. You are building muscle. If you're not, you just need to go a little heavier on what you're doing. Even on the cardio days that we do, you will build muscle. You will get lean and toned, and you'll see muscles coming in. I promise if someone just only did cardio sessions in, in at Peak, you still would build lean muscle because it's not fucking just regular cardio. Sure, there's some bodyweight stuff. Sure, there's some jumping and plows. Do you think a, a squat jump's not building crazy freaking muscles in your legs and glutes and all this other stuff? Of course, you need resistance, and that's why we have some days are more strength-based with elements of cardio than other days are more cardio-based with elements of strength. There's always total body conditioning training session to get you in the best shape of your life, lose weight, tone, and lean, build, building lean muscle, Every single time, even the freaking boxing sessions, they're building cra- crazy muscles when you're throwing them punches and you're moving your body the right way. Your lats, your arms, your shoulders, your abs, your core, your obliques, your legs are working like crazy. Just keep attacking it and pushing hard is what it takes. Increasing your weights if you have to. What other questions we have here? Look at that. Don't need the water door in boxing. That's what I said. It's no water break. I went, so I went one time months and months and years and years without offering breaks to anyone. Guess what? Everyone's an adult. You need a break. Or sa- same thing if you're tired, right? You're going at your own pace. If you're just dead and you need a break, you sit out for a second. No one's going to no one's gonna uh, talk shit to you. No one's going to say, oh my God, you suck. You're not going to hold anyone back. You do what you have to do. You sit out for a second. You recover if you're really like completely spent. Really, a lot of these workouts, the fact that people don't need to stop for a second... Tells me not going hard enough because I know that I'll fucking bust my ass as hard as I can and I'll need to fucking be like, whoa, I need to take a fucking deep breath. I need to go get a sip of water. So push it a little harder and amazing shit will happen. I guarantee it. You need a sip, run, get a sip, come back. You stop and take that whole break and sit around and you sit in the chair, you chit chat, then you stroll on back out. Then you start learning what the new round is. There's no time for that shit. I mean, certain times, depending on the routine and the workout and the circuit, but in general, you don't need that shit. What else we got? Be there at least two strength days. Really? I mean, Rachel asked you to be the two strength days. Pretty much try to if you can in a perfect world. If you were there one strength day and got three cardio days, you know the cardio days have so much elements of strength. It's never just just straight cardio, not just like r- r- only running or just doing like freaking jumping jacks or something. There's always elements of strength in everything. You think battle ropes are not toning the fuck out of your arms? It is. So think of it. A medicine ball slam. Bam. You're working your core, your legs, your lats. So I also said, I guarantee if you didn't do any strength days, you still would build lean muscle. I don't think you're looking to get all big and beefy and bulky. You just want to get nice and toned and be a sexy ass bitch. Then 
You're going to be just fine. Any other questions here? They don't really show this in here too great. They like show one line. You got to scroll. But. Well, certain people. She said, I would tell you suck if you took a water break. Me? I'm going to talk shit. Whatever. I know. We know the group. We know the crowd. And we have fun with it. You can talk shit to someone going to get a water break. Oh, you need whatever. But as you know, we're having fun with it. When you start, when someone starts being devious about their shit talking, then they just deserve, deserve a fucking backhand, right? But we're talking about just having fun, talking a little shit, knowing that it's lighthearted and we're just screwing around and that's just the way we roll because we have a good relationship with each other. Then you can fuck around like that. We're not talking, no one's going to put you down for going to get a water break. Like, oh my God, you need a water break again? Are you going to, you're going to stop again? Like, you need to stop. You fucking stop. It's as simple as that. You're going to get fucking crazy results. All right. I said, I already am a sexy bitch. Of course, of course you are. If you're a peak freak, bunch of freaking sexy bitches. Speaking of that, there's a, a something coming up about our end of our six-week challenge finale party. Announcements on that coming up soon. You don't want to miss it. Also, besides that, there's announcements coming for the six-week challenge. I have another announcement, something I've been working on. This is going to be the biggest contest that we have ever had. Ever. It's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be fucking some mind-blowing shit that I'm coming up with. And I'm going to bring you more details soon. But that was Steve Says, Episode 9. How many questions? Put them in the comments. I will personally respond to every single one of those questions. Send your questions in throughout the week. We'll answer them live on the air. We're here every week. Normally Thursdays at 12.15. We got fucked over by our electronic difficulties today. But... We hear all the time Thursdays. Steve does 12:15. Steve says Tuesdays 2:15. I will see you then. No excuses.